back to another My Damn Toys video. Tonight I have your WWE WrestleMania 37 Night 1 full show review and reaction for you guys. So as you guys know, WrestleMania is a two-night event again this year. We had Night 1 tonight, and then tomorrow night we do have Night 2. And I will say that Night 2 is definitely more hyped, at least in my opinion. I think Night 2 has the significantly better card. There's more matches that I find myself really interested in. But Night 1 does have some things that I'm looking forward to. I am excited for the show. We have a live crowd for this show. There was some weather issues coming in, but I think it all cleared up, Brad. And we're going to dive into this show, letting you guys know exactly what happened, giving you guys all of my opinions on the matches, what I thought of everything, where I think we go from here, everything in between, man. I'm going to let you know if the show was shitty, was it great, was it somewhere in between. We're going to dive into all the details, guys, and cover it all here right now. So let's dive into WrestleMania 37 Night 1 and find out what the hell took place. All right, guys, so the main show opens up with Drew McIntyre and Bobby Lashley. WWE Championship on the line. It was let us, you know, they let us know that the Women's SmackDown Championship would be main eventing the show. And so the show opens up and we did have a weather delay. You know, the show did open with a weather delay. They did all these like impromptu interviews that I thought for the most part were kind of terrible, especially Braun Strowman and Shane McMahon's. It was just kind of, I don't know. I don't know. I, did, I think KO did a pretty good job in his interview. New Day was all right, but I don't know. I felt like it was a bit scattered. I understand it. I just didn't really enjoy that at the beginning, but I understand it. I, I, know, I know what was going on. Anyways, we opened up with this, man. It was so awesome to see the crowd, man. It was so great. That's the first thing I got to say. The crowd looked incredible. I heard them. I felt them. It felt so great. But starting out WWE title, Bobby Lashley versus Drew McIntyre. I knew coming in that it would be a physical one, but this was one of the most unpredictable matches I thought on the card because you just don't know what they're thinking. You know, you got this great character, this heel character in Bobby Lashley. You got Drew McIntyre first show in front of a crowd. You know, it's a very intense situation. Crowd was lit. These guys brought it very intense. At the end of the matchup, Bobby Lashley locks in the hurt lock and Drew McIntyre, I can't, I, I, I don't know if he passed out or if he tapped out, but that shocked me, man. I mean, it is apparent that they are strapping the rocket to Bobby Lashley in this heel character, and that's fine with me. You know, I actually predicted Bobby Lashley to win. I just did not think that, you know, they would they would just throw that away, but it was really hard because, uh, again, because of the Drew McIntyre factor, but I thought this was a good opener, a great way to open things up. Drew McIntyre loses in his efforts. I wonder where he goes from here, but Bobby Lashley does retain the WWE title in a pretty entertaining opener. Very physical like I thought, and uh, I, I liked what we got out of this matchup. Next up, guys, we had our tag team turmoil match. The winner of this match, of course, going on to night two to take on Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler for the Women's Tag Team Championships. You had Tamina and Natalya, Naomi and Lana, Carmella and Billy Kay, Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke, and Riot Squad in Ruby Riot and Liv Morgan. Now, coming into this matchup, man, Liv Morgan and Ruby Riot were my pick to win. I thought, you know, they were the only cohesive tag team that made the most sense. They came out there in Harley Quinn and Joker-inspired gear, Holy shit, if we don't get figures of that, man. They looked immaculate. Like, their gear was sick as hell. It had Live to Riot on the side of the tights. What in the hell, man? That was beautiful. Easily the best gear we've seen to this point on the night. And uh, they were looking beautiful, man. They actually came to the finals. Uh, they eliminated Lana and Naomi. They eliminated Carmella and Billy Kay. They eliminated Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke. Or maybe, maybe Car no, Carmella and Billy Kay eliminated Lana and Naomi. And then uh, the Riot Squad came out, eliminated them, then eliminated eliminated Dana Brooke and Mandy. So Natalia and Tamina taking on the Riot Squad at the end here, and they had a decent little back and forth. Pretty, actually, the match was a lot better than I thought it would be. Uh, not every team got to get a ton of time in, but the Riot Squad looked beautiful here. But at the end of the match, Tamina hits a snooker splash on to Ruby Riot to pin and win. Natalia and Tamina, of all people, defeat the Riot Squad and are going on to night two. What in God's name? Do, why? 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 is that even deserving, bro? What the hell are you looking at, man? I don't agree with that one at all. I don't I don't know why you would get I think the Riot Squad has a much better story to them. They have a better look. They're just the the obvious choice was the Riot Squad to take on Nia Jax and Shayna and have an epic moment there and we are not going to get it. So that is just bushly. Bushly. Overall, I mean, I was hyped, man. I was actually entertained throughout until that. That took me out of it. I was like, "Wait, what?" I thought for sure the Riot Squad was going to win. They did they fall short, and now I don't give a goofy god dang about Night 2's tag team match. I thought it was going to be the Riot Squad, and I was going to be invested in it and be like, hell yeah, man, let's win these tag titles. Not anymore, Brad. Now I'm like, what? 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 But I mean, the match was what it was. It was, we had some pretty good back and forth. I think the Riot Squad's finishing move is badass, by the way, but damn, Brad, what the hell is even that? 
Next up, guys, we had Seth freaking Rollins taking on Cesaro here at WrestleMania. Seth Rollins' gear, it was all right. You know, it wasn't the best. Uh, I thought it would be a little bit better. It was black and red. I like the black and red, but he had, like, the, like, kind of, like, I guess cartoon-style graphic going on on the side. It reminded me of that, like, old Obama Hope poster from, like, 2008. He had, like, that side graphic going on. Cesaro looked good in his black and yellow. Dude, this matchup ruled, man. It was a great match. This matchup was absolutely a banger. I mean, we knew it would be, right? Like, coming in, I think I said it on multiple occasions throughout building up to the show that I thought this matchup would probably be one of the best technical wrestling matches of the of the weekend, if not, you know, all of all of the weekend for sure, if not just night one. But Seth and Cesaro tore it down, man. You gotta go back and watch this one. Super fun, super creative, like back and forth between the two. We knew that these guys would test the limits and go all out for each other, and they absolutely did that, man. This matchup was super fun. What an excellent showing from these guys. Absolutely loved it. Bell to bell. You gotta go check this match out. Cesaro gets the big win here over Seth Rollins, and it was just, it was intense, man. What a moment for Cesaro. I was super happy for him. Of course, I wanted Rollins to win, but that makes it 0-2 now for the for the Messiah on the big stage. So, where does the Messiah go from here, man? I mean, I don't know. You, you lose every big-time matchup on the big stage. Feel like maybe it's time to go back to a different, uh, maybe maybe do a little baby face. I don't, I don't know. I guess we'll have to see. I thought that was coming after Survivor Series, but here we are. Maybe this is a perfect time to reset his character, but damn, what a match, man. You gotta go back and watch it. Cesaro gets the win, and I was super happy for him, man. What a great matchup, and I'm so happy that he got this chance to shine. What an epic moment. What an epic matchup. Match of the night for me thus far. Next up, guys, we have the Raw Tag Team Championship match. AJ Styles and Omos going after the New Day and the Raw Tag Team titles here. Now, coming into this matchup, I figured that, you know, you don't save a guy's debut for the grandest stage of them all and then wheel him out there and have him just flop totally. So I was like, dude, AJ Styles and Omos are going home with these Raw Tag Titles right? So Omos, you know, they pretty much the whole scheme of the whole matchup was AJ Styles gets the hell beat out of him, you know New Day cuts the ring in half, really good you know, team psychology in this thing and uh, Omos finally gets tagged in there, man, and he looked like a beast I mean, this guy is going to be the next uh, I said that I hope to see him become, you know the next, like, big show level talent where, you know, he's just a big guy that can just be dominant and he can do uh, a lot of great things. Hopefully, you know, he will have that legendary of a career like Big Show and hopefully this is the first step towards that. Really dominant way to uh, showcase him and I thought it was pretty good for what it, you know it, it went about like I expected some good things here and there uh, a really cool phenomenal forearm off the shoulders of Omos by AJ Styles he springboarded off of his shoulders off the ropes off the shoulders into Kofi a uh, really big power bomb slam from Omos to win the matchup in dominant fashion and yeah man just uh, I mean not like you know not a five-star classic or anything like that but just uh, you know I think it got the point across uh, this guy's legit and uh, I hope to see him get better and better as we approach that, but AJ Styles and Omos are your new Raw Tag Team Champions. Next up, guys, was our steel cage match between Shane McMahon and Braun Strowman. You know, coming into this match, you know, I did not care about the outcome. I made that known a few times on the channel, and uh, you know, just coming in, you know, it's just I don't, like, the, the stuff leading up to the match is just cringe to me, man. Like, saying this is for everyone who's been called stupid. That's just so like elementary school, you know what I'm saying? That's like Disney Channel movie or like even less, I'd say even less than that, man. Like, what kind of line is that? And Braun made it worse in the in the pre-show, like, interviews and stuff like that, and then you had him say yell it in the match. I mean, don't get me wrong, it was cool. He threw Shane off the top of the cell. Like, the match wasn't wasn't amazing or anything. It wasn't bad. You had Jackson Riker and Elias come out there and, you know, get some hurts in on Braun on his leg to give Shane, you know, a little bit better of a chance, but I don't know, man. I just wasn't feeling this. I thought a really cool moment, though, is Shane. At one point, Shane was, like, on the outside of the cage. It looked like he was going to win, and he stuck his hand in there to wave bye-bye to Braun. Braun grabs his hand and then punches through the cell wall, rips the cell wall like in half, and then pulls Shane back in the in the structure. Thought that was super badass. That was a really cool moment. I don't think I've ever seen anything like that. And then him throwing him off, to, off the cell was pretty cool. I thought he was going to give him the Kevin Owens treatment where, you know, you choke slam him off it through the announce table and then lose the match, but threw him off the cell. Power slam, one, two, three. Braun Strowman wins. He said, this is for everyone who's ever been called stupid. I absolutely hated that, but I mean, it was what it was. Some cool moments here and there, but nothing too, you know, immaculate or anything like that. Yeah, Braun Strowman wins, and uh, I hope this feud doesn't continue. Next up, guys, was the beloved Bad Bunny and Damian Priest versus Miz and Morrison matchup, and I gotta say, man, you guys know how I feel about celebrities in my wrestling. I don't care for it. You know, it's not something that I look forward to. It just kind of makes wrestling feel like a joke, right? Like, if I'm an outsider, never watched wrestling, or, you know, I hear all the, the stuff about 
about it being fake and you know it's just it's just play and it's just stupid and just a waste of time and how sissy and all this stuff and then you know this rapper can waltz in off the street and pretty much beat the hell out of a champion uh, the WWE champion and you know everyone knows that it's scripted but there's got to be some level of realism where you meet it in the middle and to think that a like a rapper or a celebrity can come in off the street and beat the hell out of the champion from a week ago or whatever the hell it was for the Miz I don't know it's just kind of insulting I guess to the intelligence and just I don't know but, but uh, all that said all that being said Bad Bunny did look pretty damn impressive in this match man he hit a damn Canadian destroyer on the outside to the floor on John Morrison Adam Cole hasn't even had a chance to do that and Bad Bunny has done that so that's just something to let sink in there but I gotta say he was pretty impressive in this match uh he gets the win for their team I mean it pretty I mean we pretty much drew it up right we drew it up WWE pretty much has you know big plans for Damian Priest I, I mean they're clearly strapping a rocket to him I mean I don't know about entirely strapping a rocket to him but they're clearly high on him you know they clearly care and they they definitely have big things for him it seems but Bad Bunny and Damian Priest get the win after a splash off the shoulders to the Miz called it wrote it down day one I figured that would happen and you know I, I, I don't know he had this massive grand entrance bigger than a lot of superstars will ever dream of getting at Wrestlemania and I understand it I just think it's so crazy it's just insane man how people grind like their whole lives and then like just a guy who's been in a totally different genre can come in and do that and kind of steal a spotlight it's like I mean I guess that's life it's just kind of disheartening I guess to a certain degree but hats off to Bad Bunny and Damian Priest this match was pretty entertaining it was pretty fun I mean we had some good back and forth and it was it, I, I gotta say I was impressed with Bad Bunny so yeah that was our Bad Bunny matchup and for our main event of night one ladies and gentlemen the Smackdown Women's Championship on the line Sasha Banks defends against Bianca Belair, man, been looking forward to this matchup for a long time. Bianca Belair wins the Royal Rumble, showing up in this matchup versus Sasha Banks. And I was looking forward to it, man. I think this one lived up to the hype for the most part. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe it could have been a little bit better. I mean, I, I don't know if I'm just nitpicking, but it was a very fun matchup, very entertaining. These ladies got to display what they can do. I thought the athleticism and the reversal and the mind games was great. We even got a sick-ass hair whip at the end. Very good stuff, man. Very fun. Bianca and Sasha Banks put on a great matchup here in the main event of Wrestlemania and Bianca Belair is your new Smackdown Women's Champion I figured this would be the case and I think uh, you know my prediction is going to come true I predicted both Bianca and Rhea would both get their send off moments here at Wrestlemania this year and one down one to go with Rhea now I think both of these ladies are going to be launched off man this is going to be the launch off of their main event WWE careers for a long time now and they just did a fantastic job in this match man Sasha Banks burnt it down Bianca Belair did a fantastic job and this was a great way to end off night one with Bianca Belair becoming your Smackdown Women's Champion. Overall thoughts on night one? I thought it was solid. You know, I don't think... Uh, uh, let's run through the card here. Bobby Lashley and Drew was pretty good. Bad Bunny was a lot better than I expected. New Day and AJ was pretty fun. Braun and Shane was eh, but you know, it had some cool moments. Cesaro and Seth Rollins was the match of the night for me. I thought that was easily match of the night for me at least. I, I, I enjoyed the hell out of that match. I was all the way pumped. They, they were literally 90 to nothing the whole way through. The tag team turmoil would have been fine if Riot Squad won. Who the hell wants to see Natty and Tamina versus Shayna and Nia? Who wants to see that? Not me, I can tell you that. And then, of course, our main event, Sasha and Bianca, and this, of course, was good. I mean, I, yeah, yeah, it was a, I thought it was a pretty good night one. Not perfect by any means, but a fun show overall. I can't wait. This makes me even more excited for tomorrow night. I mean, tomorrow night, we got Asuka and Rhea, The Fiend and Orton, Big E and Apollo, KO and Sammy, Riddle and Sheamus. We get that god-awful Natty match with Tamina for the tag titles. Uh, literally, literally three of my least favorite women's talents on the planet at WrestleMania in this matchup. Christ. And then, of course, our triple threat main event, Edge, Daniel Bryan, and Roman Reigns. But overall, man, I really enjoyed what we got tonight. Overall, I would say my match of the night was Cesaro and Seth Rollins, and my attire of the night, like my, you know, a fig, like which attire would I want the most in figure form would be the Riot Squad, man. Ruby Riot and Liv Morgan. I know that's crazy with Seth Rollins on this show, and and, you know, other people, but AJ Styles also had a sit gear, but I think, you know, Riot Squad was, it, it by far and away, they looked badass tonight. They should have won. I don't know how they didn't, but that does it for your WrestleMania Night 1 review, man. I really enjoyed. Let me know down below what you guys thought of WrestleMania Night 1 down in the comments section below. For a random shout-out, it's gonna go to Jackson's Pro Wrestling, who says, we should get one legend and one current wrestler per set talking about the Ultimate Editions, and yeah, I agree with that. I thought that's what we were gonna keep doing, but uh, they said, nah, Brad, we're gonna give you three legends in 
a set. Not really, but they, you know, they give us two legends now for some reason, whatever the case is. But huge shout out to you, man. Thank you for the comment. If you guys would like a random shout out in a future video, leave me a comment down below. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the bell, and you could earn a random shout out. But that does it for my night one WrestleMania review, guys. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel, and don't be like Tamina and Natty and cross the damn line. You know they should have won that match. Get the hell out of here. I mean, what the blue hell was that?